Hello everyone, this will be a review of the V-Cube 4 flat version. Alright, let's get into it. This is the box the cube came in. I noticed out of the box the cube was moving just fine. It wasn't slow or anything. The, the speed was fine. One thing I did notice though, it was locking up quite a bit. I felt like I had to maybe lubricate it and tension it and break it in just to get rid of that lock-in and after I did that it did decrease the lock-in. This is the logo the cube came with. Um, after this review I'm probably going to take it off. I just kept it on so you guys could see the logo. These are not the stickers the cube came with. I changed them for brighter stickers but this is what the cube came with. These type of uh, stickers. So the size of this cube is just about the same size as a Shangsha 4x4. The weight of it is a little bit heavier than the Shangsha 4x4. After I lubricate this puzzle and tensioned it, it just got way better. The speed of this, the speed of it is pretty nice. Uh, the outer layers are fast, the inner layers are fast. Speed is really nice. I wouldn't ask for anything uh, better than this. It's really nice speed. Sometimes on 4x4s, one layer feels better than the other, but that's not the case on this. Both layers feel nice. Okay, so the feeling of this cube is a little hard to describe, but I'll try. So the feeling is not quite smooth, but the movement is smooth. I hope that makes sense. It moves nicely. The closest puzzle I can think of for the feeling will be a very broken in V-Cube 7x7. It just feels really nice. And that's kind of similar to how this feels. And sorry guys if the light keeps changing. I will fix that soon. So corner cutting of this cube. I'm just going to go for there. Because I tested it out earlier and it cuts about there. And it does. So this is actually really nice for a 4x4. Uh, let's try more. Uh, it's probably too much but let's try it anyways. Now it doesn't do that. So it stops about there. And reverse cut for this, I already know it's not going to happen. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Maybe right there would reverse cut, but that's kind of small. So, let's go over some popping. This puzzle can pop, especially if you have it on tensions like me. But I, I, I left it on this tension because the popping doesn't bother me. It's, it's, it doesn't happen too much, so it's, it's fine for me. But I figure if you have it on a tighter tension, it probably will never pop. Lockups. This puzzle still has some lockups to it. Um, it's not doing it now. Okay, maybe if I do a wiper. Okay, no. There. And then maybe if I do the OLL parity algorithm. There we go. So it does have some locking to it still. See? I will say um, it and a Sheng Shao. Um, I can't tell which one has more locking. Maybe the Sheng Shao locks a little bit more. Yeah, the Sheng Shao does have a little bit more lock into it. And I will do a solve closer to the end of this video so you can have an idea of how the puzzle performs while it's being solved. Let's go over some um, pieces and see how this puzzle looks. If you did see my unboxing, I did I did say that I'll show you guys the ring that I was talking about if you did watch my unboxing. This is the ring piece that I was talking about. It's much like a X cube 4x4 where the puzzle moves, moves based on the, the ring right here and not on the, the core arm doesn't move. It's the rings, this piece right here that actually moves. So if you do lube the core, it kind of won't work. You would have to kind of lube the ring, like this ring right there. You'd have to lube that. And then here's a little small piece. It's just, this piece is really fat. So to take it out, it's hard and then put it in, it's kind of hard. So you have the little piece right here and then you have the big piece right there. And then here is an edge piece. Here is a center piece. And the corner kind of looks like that. It, it's a really big 
it's really big down in there so it's it's kind of hard to take out and a little hard to put in so since this cube has rings it's uh it's a little bit harder to assemble than a shen shao 4x4 all right guys now that i showed you the how the pieces look and a little bit of the mechanism i'm just going to do a solve and then come back and give you my final thoughts of the cube and recommendations too okay so the cube is scrambled and uh oh it's off timer is set to zero okay i'm gonna start Okay. Oops. Okay. So time was 110 point something. All right. So I hope that solve gave you an idea of how the cube performs while it's being solved. So let's go over overall uh, performance and problems. I guess let's start off with the overall problems of the puzzle. Just a little bit of lockup it has. Um, in my unboxing, I did talk about how this layer moves by itself sometimes but that's kind of going away it pretty much uh, pretty much almost is gone so that's not really a problem it's just the little lockups i get and then the other little tiny small problem i have is just the pop in it's it's just really small when it pops though um, sometimes just the edge piece comes out or sometimes this little inner piece in here comes out uh, really easy pops to fix, not, uh, no explosions, like nothing like that. And it's not much of a problem, and I know it's because of my tensions. I kind of refuse to tighten it because I really, I really like how the puzzle feel on this tension. So overall performance though, uh, the puzzle is pretty nice. Uh, I like the inner layers and the outer layers. The outer layers are close, compared to a Shang Shao 4x4, the V-Cube 4x4 outer layer is actually closer to a 3x3. So when you're solving the 4x4, the outer layer is, when you get to the outer layers, it's kind of just like solving a 3x3. And the V-Cube is closer to that 3x3 feeling on the outer layers than the Shang Shao is. So that is one plus I really like about the V-Cube. Also another plus I like about it is just the middle layers are just closer to like a 2x2 feeling. Uh, this cube has a springy type of feel to it. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. Kind of like the Lingyang V2. To me, the Lingyang V2 has that, uh, when you're turning, it kind of has that springy feel to it. You know? This kind of have a, it's kind of a springy feel to it too. Which makes it a more enjoyable puzzle to solve with. So some of you are probably wondering if this cube is worth buying. And I'll go over some points and then you decide if it's worth buying for you point number one is it's really really pricey uh it cost me over 40 dollars to get this puzzle and i'm not sure if you're willing to pay for four by four that's over 40 bucks i myself think it's kind of too expensive i honestly think this puzzle should be like maybe 20 dollars or 15 dollars that would be a more reasonable price Point number two would be if you have an awesome, awesome Shang Shao 4x4. If pretty much you think the 4x4 is kind of almost perfect or perfect in your eyes, then there is really no need to buy this then because you already have a pretty much perfect 4x4. 
Point number three, if you just have the money and you're like, yeah, I just want to try out the V-Cube, then go ahead, try it out. I really, I recommend everybody try it, actually. Comparing it to the Shengsha 4x4 V4, this is not modded and this is not modded. I should probably make a separate uh, video about that, though, comparing them. This, this has some plus and minuses, and this has some plus and minuses, or pros and cons. Um, when you add those all up, the, the, these are probably kind of equal, you know? Well, for me, I would say I'm not sure which one I want to be my main. Uh, I'm still trying to decide which one I like better, but I'm completely not sure right now. I must say though, if you, if you do think about buying the V-Cube 4, I strongly, strongly advise you to buy the assembled one. I would say stay away from the DIY one because um, I was talking to um, Crazy Back Huber, don't know if he wanted me to mention him, but I was talking to him, he got the DIY, they gave him different springs to, cho different springs to choose from, and it just seems just too much. I feel like when you get the assembled, they already assembled it with the perfect spring for this cube and I just I just think overall the problems have reduced if you just get the assembled one that's just my opinion on it and I don't think you can go wrong with getting the assembled ones because when I disassembled this I noticed there was no ex there were no extra flask on the police pieces and everything was just fine so um, he doesn't like his, but I like mine. He got a DIY and I got an assembled. So just based on that, I'm just gonna say get the assembled. You're safer by getting the assembled version. Oh, and I went to a competition recently and had some people play with this and they actually really liked this puzzle. So that's pretty cool that they liked it as well as myself liking it. That's it for this review. I hope this helped you in deciding if it's worth for you to get it or not. Alright guys, thank you for watching this video. Have a great time. Bye.